And we are live. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Into the Core podcast with myself, Linda. I'm so excited to have you in this new year. It is January 14th, and I am oh so proud of the guest that I have. Um, He's absolutely fantastic. Um, We have some pet names for each other, but not that kind of pet names. It's respectful pet names, okay? Um, But he's absolutely fantastic. And I say this, um, and I hope you hear me. Everybody in their lives, whoever is in business or not, you need a mentor. You need somebody who believes in you. You need somebody who pushes you. You need somebody who will tell you the truth, whether it makes you cry or whether it, you know, you need a mentor. You need somebody absolutely amazing in your life. With that, we got to start with my intro before I introduce my fabulous friend. Into the core. Get into it. All good things in Africa and beyond. You're absolutely right. We're talking about all good things in Africa and beyond and somebody who allowed me to experience Africa and beyond. His name is Addis Alemayo. Addis, welcome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. So I really loved something that you tweeted um, recently. I'm actually just getting right into it. Um, I really loved that you tweeted. um, It's not about where you are. No, it's not about where you think you are. It's about where you're going. And this was in terms of how you are encouraging people. So um, talk to me a little bit about that and why it came up, because this is going to bring out all the other questions behind the man that I call my mentor. Uh, You know what? It it actually came up by accident. So I had a friend of mine um, (laughs) who I spent some time with in Canada send me a picture uh, of myself 30 years ago as a waiter in a hotel. Uh, and uh, he says, happy birthday. I took this picture 30 years ago, if you remember. Uh, and that was basically what you know what sparked the whole thing. And I sent it to a bunch of friends. I said, yo, check me out 30 years ago. Uh, and uh, one of my good friends who you know had basically said, hey, man, this is this is great. You should post this and, and inspire inspire the kids out there. Because some of those things, you know, some of these kids these days think everything happens uh, you know, in a span of a week. So they need to know what it takes to sort of get to where you are. And uh, yeah, that, that was the spark of of, uh, uh, of that tweet. And it's gotten over 70,000 hits on Twitter and over 20,000 on LinkedIn. I think people felt connected to it. And I had a lot of young people from all over the continent uh, saying thank you, you know, it's an inspiration, it's just a wake up call and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that was what I was going for, so I'm glad. I'm glad you picked it up as well. So yeah, it obviously worked. Of course, it was absolutely fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about, um, you know, you and I um, met and I say serendipitously, uh, it was, I was doing a show, um, uh, our mutual friend, Tony decided to bring you in to the studio. Um, I said hello and it was just like oh hey so he's just he's like oh Linda I'm just showing him around and you were like hey yes he's from Ethiopia yeah great and you walked out and that was it we didn't really even talk much Um, cut to a year and a half or a year later um, I'm sitting at a cafe in fact a big shout out to Caldi's is Caldi's still the place to go but anyway big shout out to Caldi's um, coffee and Addis, a friend of mine said, you need to meet this person. He's starting up the first English radio station. And I met you and it was like, what? I went to Kani. So, you know, I was in visual <laughs> and I was just like, I felt so at home. I mean, Ethiopia already is home to me. But yeah. So talk to me about how you move back from Canada into Ethiopia and how the whole, you know, story started. 
So I mean, you know, honestly, I grew I grew up. I mean, you know this, but I mean, for the audience, just so that they have some sort of background, I grew up in Kenya. So for me, um, you know, from a boy to a man, for me it was Kenya. Like you said, Carney, Visual, Beat House, and all of those, you know, all of those joints that you know, the three twenty three from uh, you know, kind of gave me to to you know to the city. Uh, I mean, I did I did all that, you know. So I'm you know old school Nairobi boy. Uh, so initially, I mean, I actually wanted to move back to Kenya. Uh, uh, and I did, I did come through. I think uh, sometime around ninety eight, ninety nine, to check it out. And Kenya at that time was going through its own transformation, and I realized that you know the sort of the entry price for doing anything in Kenya was going to be much harder. Um, getting a work permit, getting a business permit, all of that. And I looked at that and I said, okay, maybe maybe Ethiopia is the place that I need to sort of lay my ground and then build something out of. Uh, obviously, I was born here, I'm Ethiopian, so it was, it was a, I, I wouldn't say it was an easier entrance because even though I'm Ethiopian and I speak the language and I hardly knew anybody here because I didn't have a network. I didn't go to school with a group of friends who are now, you know, in key places in government or key places in the private sector. I, I had that in Kenya. I didn't have that here. Uh, yeah. So, but be, be that it may be, um, yeah, I moved here 20 years ago without planning it. I actually came here on vacation uh, and it ended up uh, ended up staying. Uh, so yeah, well, it's been uh, it's been a journey. No, no regrets, and I still have a foot in, in Nairobi, as you know. I'm there every couple of weeks. It's still home for me, very much so. Uh, I'm you know I'm one of those guys that feels like uh, these borders shouldn't be there um, because you know we should we should be able to. Zigzag through the continent wherever we may be. Just like you know, if you're an American, you can fly from California to New York and still be in America. There's no reason why we can't do that on the continent, but that's a totally different conversation. Uh, so yeah, here we are. And and what was the you know? Um, I feel it was such um, a turn point in Ethiopia because now I you know I hear there are many other um, radio stations that have like an English platform. But for you to come in and decide that that was one of the, you know, that was a path to take in, in Ethiopia. I mean, like, how did that come about? You know, um, for everything that I do in terms of business, it comes from an opportunity or it comes from actually, it comes from a personal problem that I faced or a personal issue. Uh, and I look around and I go, you know, upon facing this same issue, there's probably other people that, you know, want the same service or product. So for me, when I first moved out here, I had the first, iPhone, no, I what, what do they call it? I uh, iPod. I think it was a what, what they call it? The little music, uh, uh, music, yeah, uh, yeah. dingy iPods. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, iPod. You, you did that, yeah. and then they had like two thousand songs. And I was, so I had one of those, and I plugged it into my dad's car, and that's and that's all I needed. So I, you know, I had all my music in there, and that was it. And then I lost it, and turned the radio on one day, and 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 just was shocked that there was nothing in there that I could listen to and that I could enjoy. And then you know, sitting around talking to my friends and expats and everybody else, uh, realizing that most everybody carried CDs. You know, like you know, you remember those bags of CDs that everybody had in the back of their trunk? Um, that was, you know, that was what people's entertainment was. But above and beyond that, you had a lot of expats in the city. And Addis is, you know, the head of the AU, and you know, you have two U.S. embassies. You have a ton of sort of diplomatic force here. You know, you, you yourself lived here, so you know. And all of these people didn't really know what was going on in the city because nobody talked to them in English. You know, nobody knew which road would be closed. Nobody knew what law was going to be passed. Nothing. You imagine living in a city where the city or the government is not communicating with, with a portion of the citizens. And those portion of the citizenship are the ones that have the most disposable income in that city, which was the expat community in, in, in Addis. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was what sparked that was what sparked the, the interest to do to do radio. And that's why I came to to the capital and talk to Chris and and met Tony and you guys and just to check it out and see you know what it takes to run a radio station. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I gotta I gotta give you all the you know because um, um, building it from the from the ground up and making sure that you got the right people in and um, yeah. What a fun time in my life. And obviously because you were there, it, it just made things 10 times better. Um, talk to me about your transition. I mean, like some of the beautiful things that you did, um, even whilst you were, um, whilst you were doing the radio, 
you had so many other things going on. You had been helping people in the manufacturing um, sector. You were, um, you know, mentoring us when it came to, you know, um, things that international platforms or if we were going to do something in fashion and business, like what that should look like, especially if we wanted to impact Africa. And it was about, um, you know, um, creating a platform that was not just about women walking up and down and looking cute, you know, it was about um, really building our economies. And then there was um, the advertising sector, you know, with 251 communication, and you have just continued to go on. So um, in terms of advertising in Africa, um, what are your thoughts, especially right now during our COVID period? Um, you know, advertising on the continent is different from one region to another. I mean, I mean Kenya is much more developed than us, but Africa is way over, you know, on the other side of, of, uh, of the dial. Uh, West Africa has a different sort of psyche and mentality. They're divided into Francophone and Anglophone. So it's, you know, every market has its own niche. But there's one thing that makes us African, uh, and there's one thing that unites us. I mean, one is the love for family, the respect for our elders, uh, um, you know, the commitment to education, the love for our respective continent and our countries, uh, our little tribes, um, you know, our little, uh, you know, whatever it may be, there's something that uniquely makes us, uh, makes us African that transcends borders, right? Um, you know, and we don't realize that until we leave the comfort zone of our respective homes. So when I'm, you know, I was in Toronto, um, I'll give an example, I mean, growing up, uh, you know, Somalis and Ethiopians had this sort of mutual hate for each other, if you call it that, because the propaganda from both countries and both sides was all political. But, you know, uh, you know I didn't realize that, um, you know, we have much in common than anything else. You know, when I when I moved to when I moved to Canada and met with a whole bunch of Somalis and and actually, you know, my, my some of my best roommates who I'm still in touch with are, are you know, Somalis. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we don't realize how what unites us until we leave the continent. We realize, okay, we're all Africans, we're all East Africans. We need to huddle together. We, you know, we can relate to each other much better than anybody else. Um, uh, I think that's now transcending uh, uh, into the digital world because now you see connections between, you know, collaborations between different artists, musicians, business people as well, uh, that, that is transcending uh, borders. Uh, so yeah. uh, I think I think the youth now and the generation now has, has it much easier than we did 30 years ago, where, you know, if you wanted information on a certain country or a certain person, you had to go to the library and, and, and you know, pick out a book and read about it. Well, now you can just Google about anything and, and connect to almost anybody in any part of the world. Uh, it's a different world, it's a different opportunity, but it's also a different challenge. So I think um, on the communication, the advertising side and the marketing side, I think digital is gonna be a huge, huge sort of uh, leapfrog for Africa because uh, I think it, Ethiopia is considered sort of like the, the back end of the IT world on the continent, the mobile, mobile world. But little do people realize that we have 56 million mobile subscribers at the moment out of 110 million people. The average age here is 17 years old. Um, you got kids consuming all sorts of content uh, locally. Uh, you got kids like building, you know, partnerships and 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 engagements with other Africans across the border and across across the continent and across the world as well. Um, yeah. uh, I think that kids today consume the same music, the same fashion, and the same everything that kids in New York and Frankfurt and London and, and Berlin or Nairobi or Joburg, they're all the same. They all listen to the same music at the same time, check out the same content at the same time, which was different. I mean, if you remember us, we watched Top of the Pops once a week, a month after it was shown in, in the UK, remember? Like, we used to go to West Lansing yeah. with those little VHS cassettes and we had a whole Top of the Pops for a month. And that was what we would consume. So, you know, we, we got the number one hits of three months after it was number one in the UK. So not with the kids these days. Uh, so it's things have changed. Things have absolutely changed. And you're right. You know, the digital world is um, evolving fast. You know, it's almost like there's always a new platform that is new. And if you don't catch on to it, you'll be left behind. Um, and that's one aspect that I feel like, especially in the advertising world, if, if brands don't catch on as fast and if they don't have um, 
really digitally savvy um, marketers, um, you know, PR communication, you know, if, you, if, if that package of yours is not really tight, then you get left behind and um, everything will be moving past you. But um, right now you are um, heading up uh, the Kazana group, right? Did I say that right? Kazana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, and one of the, the Swahili that, word. Uh, and one. Giving back to my roots. Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> I, said, I mean, it's, it's a Swahili world uh, word, Kazana. So I, I had to pick uh, my Kenyan, my Kenyan, go back to my Kenyan roots because that's where my hustling started. I really love it. So talk to me because. Um, what I do love is like, you know, up front, the moment you actually look at the, uh, at your, you know, your page, it's Africa Unlocked. Um, what a powerful statement. Explain a little bit of that to me. Um, Africa I don't think we realized Unlocked. So for me, it's about uh, a bit more than Africa Unlocked. It's, a, it's about unlocking the potential of the continent. Um, uh, and you know, in in my last you know in my last five six years, I've, I've had a really good, amazing uh, sort of network on the continent. Um, um, through actually the last ten years, through the African Leadership Network, through Fred's uh, Fred's group, and and being on the board of that group, and 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 collaborating and meeting you know with you know three four hundred African leaders from all over the continent, and you realize there's just so much talent. There's also a ton of opportunities on the continent. This is probably the last place on earth that has a huge surge of growth to still go because everywhere else on, 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 on earth, the competition is tough for everything. So this is the last place on earth where you can still create substantial business and substantial growth. And there's still a huge amount of opportunities on the ground, irrespective of where you are on the continent. All right. So for me, um, I wanted to see the possibility of of moving beyond the region, moving beyond Kenya and Ethiopia and, and this comfort zone that I'm in to see what else is out there throughout the continent. So for me, Kazana is a launchpad for investing in African SMEs and African startups, respective of where they are on the continent. Yeah. Um, what are, who are some of the, you know, um, I know there's a media side to it right now that you've, that you, that you're also working with, but who are some of the, the companies, if you can explain some of the dynamics of the companies that you are, you know, that you are working it with, within Kazana. So with the, Kazana is essentially a holding company, of all of the, all of the investments that I've made over the course of the last probably five years and so everything from uh kana tv which you know which was probably the second or third second uh private tv station here in ethiopia we you know uh we do a dubbing sort of uh program of uh, indian and, and turkish content in amharic and distributed here um and then uh within that is local 251 communications which you mentioned earlier uh our latest investment is a local stocks manufacturing that a young man started here about two years ago and myself and a few friends that invested in um and then um, these other investments that uh, i'm part of uh the first angels investment group here in, in in ethiopia so between myself and five friends we get together once a week we have young people pitch to us here in ethiopia and then um you know if we if we if we like what we see and and, and the negotiations are right we invest in them so all of these little entities that i've invested in have actually brought it into the kazana family the kazana group so it's much easier to manage as as, as one structure that's amazing i really love that um you have this, you know, number one, you're getting together with, you know, um, business for, you know, forward thinking businessmen and women, um, and, you know, as a private angel group and, and getting together to support younger, um, young entrepreneurs, young business entrepreneurs. I think that is brilliant. Um, out of all of those groups, who are some of the ones that have been, you know, that have completely stood out and blown your mind away? I mean, like, would you like us to highlight some of them? Um, yeah, I mean, um, there's, there's a few entities, uh, but to be honest with you, I actually would love to highlight the fact that I'm coming to Nairobi next month. Uh, we're going to host the first sort of pitching session in Kenya. So I want to see some young 
you know, hungry uh, Kenyans come out, uh, you know, and, and pitch to us. And, 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 and I want to I wanna be able to invest. Uh, because for me, I think um, you can do a lot with $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $50,000. And even if you that money it's still investing in what's right because like on twitter um you know work hard uh, and uh, you know i'm here because i failed often and are we going in and out um there was a little bit of a delay while you were talking i don't know if you can you know if you can see us right now but um so you're coming into nairobi um and and it would be fantastic for you to see some of um the people who are out here who can come and pitch to you so if you could just kindly repeat um what you mentioned i mean like where can they find you should they send you an email directly so that they could um understand where you are or do you want to see them coming out in the in the south um so we're gonna, we're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna make an, we're gonna make an announcement next week online, um, and and uh, anybody that wants to pitch with us will, will email us um, just the first page or one page of, of what they're pitching, uh, and then we'll make arrangements uh, to book a hotel and uh, make arrangements with them for us for them to come and see us face to face and and for us to be able to you know um, answer the questions that we need to and for them to be able to sort of uh, defend their their business case. So it's sort of. Uh, and I'm excited about it. Uh, we, we picked Nairobi first because obviously that's where my home is and I grew up. But we plan to take it to Kampala next. We plan to take it to Dar es Salaam, uh, DRC, and a couple of other places where I feel, uh, like I said, you know, opportunities are just immense. And uh, you yeah. know, I have a few friends that are on the ride with me, so it's good. No, this is absolutely fantastic. I have to do a, um, a quick one because I have to say congratulations. These two people who've won these beautiful, um, um, because my partners are absolutely fantastic. So oh, there we go. Nokia um, earbuds. Uh, so congratulations to Steve and to John. You will be getting your um, earbuds uh, tomorrow. So we'll send them out to you. Just make sure you DM me your um, location. So I know that Steve and John both know who they are. So congratulations. You did a fabulous job. Thank you for commenting in and of course, uh, letting us know in detail and um, um, highlighting all the key information about um, my interview with um, Brian Owango from Aqueous, um, and of course, uh, Jonathan Yach. So I'm really appreciative of that. So congratulations, and thank you so much to my partners, Nokia, um, for always keeping the conversation going. This is what it's about, innovation, and um, this is Brill. Um, and also just to welcome on board a brand new, um, amazing brand um, that have also jumped into the bandwagon of Into the Core podcast. I really want to say thank you to um, Akazi. Um, they're so fantastic. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but brass, there we go up there um made from recycled um elements um made in in kibra and different other spaces um i'll be telling you about opportunities to actually win big with them because i've got so many beautiful things um happening here i've got this beautiful oh my gosh i'm about rings i'm just about bling yeah right there um, I really love their products. I think their products are stunning and it's always great when you hear about people who are all about the sustainable um, elements. So, oops, there we go. So black and white, there's a story to it and I'm going to put it down. Um, so make sure you check out the video later on on YouTube. So thank you very much, um, Akazi in Africa and for Nokia for coming on board. And I think we're going to be having more special brands jumping in in the next few weeks. So we're excited. 2021, here we go. Adis, um, let's talk a little bit about, okay, so other than now the innovation, um, let's talk about the media side of things because I know you're still working in media in some way, form or the other, right? Yeah, I mean, um, so in, 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 in I think... Um, on the media space, I don't think anybody's figured it out uh, exactly where the world is heading uh, because um, I think the internet and the fact that, at least on the continent, you have more people getting online, you have more people that spend their time 
um, on their phone than uh, watching TV or consuming radio content. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the a lot of, a lot of content, a lot of Afrocentric content, content that speaks to us. Um, I think that's where the opportunity is. So we're looking at a few sort of digital production companies. Uh, we've been in touch with a company out of Kenya as well. We've got a good conversation um, that, that is looking at, you know, uh, original content out of the region. Uh, I believe that's where the, the next phase of growth is. Um, you know, if you look at what the, you know, what the U.S. and everywhere else is going, people are unplugging their cable, unplugging their satellite dishes and, and going streaming. So Netflix, the growth of Netflix and some of the other, you know, sort of streaming services shows you where the world is heading. So with, with the growth of uh, data connectivity, um, at least on the continent, so we've seen what's happened in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, I think digital content is, is still a space. I think there's still room to grow. There's still room to sort of, I don't like to say own that space, but at least find a niche uh, for ourselves in that space. So we're looking at that uh, seriously. Um, and it's, you have to be really careful in terms of how you go about it, because it's not like you can sort of copy what Netflix has done, because the model has to be different for the continent. Uh, so is it going to be subscription based? Is it going to be sponsorship based? Is it going to be, you know, because production costs are high, but they're getting lower now because now, you know, if you have a decent smartphone, you know, you're in business. Uh, and if you have a decent mic, you're in business. And like here we are doing a podcast internationally uh, <laughs> and streaming to the rest of the world. I mean, who knew you couldn't do this 15 years ago? So look how far we've come. And so, uh, I think that the digital media space is very interesting, especially for, for niche markets. Um, I mean, there's a ton of Africans that don't speak English or French or Spanish, yeah. right? Yeah. So what about content for them? Um, so I think there's there's opportunities for, you know, local language content, there's opportunities for local language media. Uh, just like, you know, in Kenya, you have, I think, over 300 something radio stations and a vast majority of them are not English or Swahili stations. They're, which, you know, vernacular radio stations that speak to, yeah. a, you know, specific groups. So I think that that's sort of audience is going to move to digital. Uh, and so there's a lot of opportunities to provide content for, for that audience. And I think there's enough market demand and enough brands that are trying to speak to, to the same people. So. That space is looking very interesting, and uh, we've seen a, a few startups on the continent that are looking at that space. Well, I don't think there's any clear winner uh, in in that space. So yeah, and it's you know it's fairly interesting. You know? Very interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a watch this space moment um, for sure, especially in the continent. What I do like is. Um, uh, the content that is coming out of this continent. I mean, like, um, it's ever growing, uh, you know, extremely rich and um, very, you know, it has the, the big potential. What are some of the potentials that you feel um, that are coming out of East Africa at the moment? I mean, for you, if you're if you're to pick um, top three, top five, I know we've spoken about the digital space, um, uh, you know, the branding space and how it's evolving, but what are some of the other elements that you think that would be absolutely fantastic for people to tap into? If we're just thinking about the youth, which is something that you're very passionate about, um, about the youth, um, where do you think that they should tap into? Um, I, I, th I think there's just too much noise um, around innovation and around tech. Uh, and I think people are forgetting that, um, you know, people need to get up in the morning and eat breakfast uh, and eat lunch and, and have dinner and, and you know, get on a taxi and, and go to work and wear clothes and, you know, consume. So I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity um, to start uh, producing what we consume. Uh, I think if anything that COVID has taught us, especially the first couple of months, when China stopped, you know, churning out their factories and you had a huge number of shortage in, 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 in various products. I think there was, there was a wake up call globally uh, to say, you know, what if something like this happens? How do we, you know, feed our population? How do we, you know, provide medicine and all of that? I think agriculture is a major opportunity on the continent. I don't think it's, 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 it's um, it's really been uh, exploited. Uh, I think manufacturing is still at in infancy, given the fact that 
the African Union uh, and the rest of the continent is looking at one market on the continent at the moment, opening up the borders. Um, infrastructure is now developing thanks to China and and uh, and the World Bank and and so forth. So you know we're about to open up the road between Nairobi and and Addis. Uh, could you imagine the possibility of of trade between those two countries and then onwards to Tanzania and, and all the way down? So what can Ethiopians manufacture that Kenyans need? What can you know? What do you know? What do Kenyans manufacture that Ethiopians need? I think, I think the youth need to start looking at it. Like I said, my last investment was a socks factory, and a lot of people ask me why socks, and I said, there's a hundred million of us. I mean, come on, like everybody needs socks. Like, you know, it's not sexy, but it's socks. I mean, you know, everybody no, has one in the drawer. It's a necessity. It's 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 needed. It's an essential. Um, That's it. Yeah. It's not sexy, yeah. but it's, it's, you know, it's business. <laughs> so for me, I know, I'm a businessman, so I mean, it's, it's about that. It's about providing our people with, with what they need right here ourselves. And so uh, for me, I would rather buy something across the border in Kenya or Tanzania or Sudan or Somalia or, or wherever in the region rather than, you know, uh, paying somebody in China or Asia to, you know, to, to produce something for me. Um, so I think... Uh, there's going to be a huge opportunity going forward uh, if we can wake up and, and exploit um, the opportunity. Yeah. What do you think about the word sustainability? Do you think that it is um, overkilled, overrated? And um, yeah, where would you place it right now in terms of context and content? Uh, for me, it, it, it's... it's um, Okay, having come from sort of the development world, uh, uh, I think if you're talking in the business sense, um, and I hear about you know social enterprises and so forth, and it's great to go out there and produce or make something and provide a service uh, for a community because they need it. It's great, but it's never going to work unless it's sustainable, right? Because yeah. eventually somebody has to pay for it in order for for that to sustain itself. Uh, and and so for me, if we're talking about you know sustainability in the environmental environmental sense, yes, definitely. I mean, that's a huge wake up call for Earth, for right? everybody on 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 Earth to start really thinking about what, what we're consuming, how much we're consuming, and if we can keep consuming the way we are consuming, because we'll consume ourselves out of this Earth. Uh, but above and beyond that, and those are policy matters and and issues that are way above my pay grade, so I'm not even going to go there. But I need to point that out. But we're talking about, you know, what me and you were talking about in terms of sustainability, which I, I think would mean that um, you, you can have the, you know, the greatest idea in the world um, or the greatest service or product, whatever. But unless somebody's willing to go in their pocket and pay for it, there's no way you can sustain a life. You know, there's no way you can keep giving, uh, you know, unless you're in a, even Bill Gates Foundation makes money in order to keep sustaining us. So, yeah. You know, the foundation invests. Um, and and gets you know gets whatever it does and then, then they reinvent that money back into development. So there has to be some way of churning revenue and profit in order to keep sustaining. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Yeah. All right. So um, as we're going to be brand ambassadors to our own countries, um, where are some of the places? If I was a Kenyan and I'm coming to visit Ethiopia, we had this huge debate that was going on online about Naomi Campbell being um, our brand I ambassador. I, I know. I saw Listen, it. What, I, saw I know. It. Uh, <laughs> you know. Here's my thing. She loves Kenya, and I'm like, why not? Come on, let's not let let's not be daft about it. You guys are um, lucky. I mean, you have a supermodel yeah. pushing you. Yeah, take it. <laughs> take As long it. as you can be in the tourist, who cares? I know. Listen, for everybody else, you know, I'm 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 gonna just say, okay. So, um, favorite places that we should top three places we should definitely visit when we're in Ethiopia, and let's look at the factor of. Um, a business vacation to make sure that we could get some business done while we're on vacation. Top three places. Well, I'd have to say Addis first because I mean, of course, you, need to, you, you you've lived here, so I mean, and it's grown and it's changed and it's become <laughs> much more cosmo and there's just so many new places and shopping and all the you know. I, I'm still discovering this city, so yeah, I, you know, I love the city. I think there's a lot to see and a lot to do. Uh, so a weekend in Addis is definitely a must. It's, 
you know, I don't know now, but there was six flights a day from Nairobi to Addis. It's sort of like, it's the, I, I think it's the, probably one of the top three or four uh, shuttle trips on the continent. I think it's Joburg and Cape Town, uh, Addis, Nairobi, and I think Nairobi, Kampala, and, and uh, Lagos, Accra. Those are the, you know, the, sort of the shuttle sort of trips on the continent that, you know, people take. Um, so, I, you know, a trip, a weekend trip to Addis is easy. I mean, for Kenyans, you don't need a visa. You just walk right in. Uh, we're welcoming, um, you know. Yeah. Shopping is fun. Uh, you know, everybody picks up their leather and then, they, you know, their, their Ethiopian dresses and scarves and whatnot. I don't have to tell you because uh, you guys eat it up. So Addis is definitely a must. Um, and I think uh, when it comes to Ethiopia, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, cultural cultural sort of exchanges. So Ethiopia, unlike Kenya, where you guys have more nature and, and sort of the beach kind of uh, vacation, we're more culture and history. So uh, obviously um, going out to Lalibela, which is you know one of the top, I think, seven, eight wonders of the world. Um, there's about nine or 10 UNESCO World Heritage Sites uh, uh, in Ethiopia, Aksum is one, Laribala is one, Gondar, and then you can go down south to the Rift Valley and and, and drive down to the different lakes in, in the Rift Valley. And, and uh, there's just a, some amazing nature sites and, and sort of camping sites that are around. That's different. The food is different. The calendar is different. You're seven years younger when you come to Addis. Um, the time is different. Um, you know, our, our internet is not that great, so you probably won't be in touch with the office that much. So that's a plus, also. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you'll be you can really take a step real. back. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, one of the places um, in in Kenya that for me I feel like is completely underrated is um, Turkana. Like, I really wish everybody could go out there and see it. Um, the beaches there are absolutely stunning, fantastic. The culture also. So definitely a top spot, you know, for people to go to. Um, yeah. But you know what? We can't leave without our beaches. They're so beautiful. They're everything. So um, throw in a Diani and throw in a Lamu culture. And, you know... We've got our girl in Lamu, Umra, who is um, hopefully going to be the next mayor. That's that's basically what we're we're keeping a watch out for. Um, so yeah, definitely some beautiful spaces to go into. Um, yeah, so excited about that. No, no, so, no. Um, I don't think there's so, enough, I don't think there's enough visits between the two of us. I think I don't think uh, Ethiopians. Um, I think there's a few people that end up in Mombasa. Um, and have and, and no Mombasa and maybe Nairobi because they tend to go there for business. But I don't yeah. think it fits, you know, sort of um, people don't realize the value of, of Kenya and the value of Nairobi and the value of Mombasa for a family trip, for a side trip. Just um, I think Dubai still wins when it comes to top of mind for a weekend visit um, because of the yeah. shopping and whatever. But, you know, for me, there's two direct flights to Mombasa, six flights to Nairobi on a daily basis. You don't need a visa. You can just walk right in. It's next door. Um, it's an easy sort of trip. Yes. So I'm trying to point to you and I'm like, yeah, right there. That is called Brand Kenya, right there. I didn't have to do it for anybody. And, and, and he just loves Kenya. So um, I really appreciate your time, Addis. Would you have any other last words before we say adios? Um, for me, I, I think, and, I, and I've said this, um, I've said this a lot. I, I think there's a huge opportunity between our two countries, between Kenya and Ethiopia. I think um, Ethiopia feel closer to Kenya than, uh, than anybody else uh, on the continent. Um, I, I think there's this, you know, unwritten sort of brotherly, sisterly love between us. It started off with Jomo Kenyatta and Halat Selassie, uh, and it never stopped. We've always had each other's back, uh, you know, for the last, you know, 75, 80 years. Uh, I think that relationship goes, you know, very deep. Every time Ethiopia has had problems, you know, Kenya has always, you know, had our back. Uh, I think when it comes to exploiting the business opportunities between the two countries, I don't think we've, we've scratched the surface. 
uh, on that regard. And I keep nagging our embassy in, in Kenya about that, and I keep nagging the Kenyan embassy here in regards to that. And I think we need to take it beyond government to facilitate that. I think there needs to be a lot more engagement on the commercial side, on the business side. I think, and I'll be honest, and I'll brutally honest, I think Kenyans are too conservative when it comes to business. And you guys are like the Americans of the region. You want everything to be smooth and whatnot before you, you come in and, and look at opportunities. Because the first thing Kenyan business people would say is, I can't get my money out. They don't speak English. Da, 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 da. So, I mean, you have that issue. So, y'all need to wake up because, you know, for me, uh, I feel much more comfortable with a Yoroge than I do with, you know, a Patel uh, or, you know, a Chong from China. I mean, we're right next door. So, <laughs> you know, I think there's, there's a major opportunity between between our two sort of respective economies. I think Kenyans are a bit ahead on the business side, both on the manufacturing and the service side. I think Ethiopians could learn a lot more. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of Ethiopians that have realized there's resources in Kenya that we can tap into. Uh, I don't know, there's about 30, 40,000 Kenyans that live out in Denver State now that work in various sort of manufacturing and factories and so forth. There's, there's a serious Kenyan population now in and around Addis, you know. Uh, yeah. I think uh, over the course of the next couple of years, once the, you know, the policy changes happen and the infrastructure, the Lamu Court and all of that comes into play, uh, and we just, you know, we just launched the one border pause in, in Moyale, I think it was last month between our two presidents or our prime minister and, and President Kenyatta. So for me, I mean, it's, it's ended. We have hardly touched the surface. And yeah. uh, I'm excited about the opportunity going forward. I think the, you know, the business community, and especially the youth, and it doesn't have to be, you know, guys that are making huge amounts of money. It could be, you know, no, uh, the guy Joa Kali guys on the on the, you know on this yes, on the, the on the drive to Karen. Uh, the Joa Kali guys around Westland. Some of the stuff that they produce, yeah, that stuff would do well here. Every time I'm in Nairobi, and I'm, I see the furniture and and some of the knickknacks and some of the stuff that's produced, and I'm like, this this would go well in Kenya. You know, I mean in Ethiopia. I mean, I know that. So, I think people need to exploit uh, the people to people relationship and the business relationship between us. Yeah, I, I really love that. I mean, like, yes, I do feel that there needs we need to explore more of each other's um, commercial assets. Um, and I feel like we need to start doing like group trips. You know how we usually do group trips to um, Thailand, to China. Um, I do believe that there needs to be somebody who can put together a tour and do, um, you know, a commercial tour. Um, so that we could exploit that. I mean, like one of my favorite brands um, um, that was done by, uh, what's his name? Well, there's Enzo, which I love, but uh, bugger, the shoe has gone out of my head, but the Kenyan guy who I introduced you to, um, who came in and, and did some beautiful um, leather boots from there. I mean, uh, potential is humongous. I feel sometimes we like to keep little secrets to ourselves, but we should just spread the word and start, you know, seeing how we could really um, develop our inter Africa relationships, you know? Nice. And um, there you go. yeah, so um, I really appreciate just, the just time. Like you the, have. Like... I, wanted to, I wanted to mention one thing. I wanted to mention one thing. Wait, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, Why is it at the end? I want the Kenyan public to okay. see if this is true. So when I lived in Kenya, uh -huh. can you hear me? Now? So when when I lived when I lived in I Kenya, you. Kenyans and I mean people in Nairobi, people hardly ate injera in Nairobi, and now injera has become the thing. One, right? So I think that's yes. been the Ethiopian influence in Kenya, right? The second thing <laughs> is Kenyans never used to kiss. Kenyans never used to kiss when you saw each other. I think that was the influence of Ethiopians. Because now I see you guys kissing like we do when you're oh, greeting yeah, each do, other. We, yeah, I think they're still stuck on two. I give three. I still have the Abesha, you know, bring it in for like, let's, if, I, if you want to add one more, let's just do it. Um, oh, yeah. well, that's, that's, a bit of, that's a bit of Ethiopian influence in Kenya. <laughs> But I said, it was surprising to me, but for people to say, you know, let's go out for injera, I was like, oh, you eat injera now? So, yeah. I would love to see that, you know, brought back to, to the Ethiopian side. And so I want to see Tusker in, in, the, in, the, in the bars here. And, you know, I want to see a few uh, Nyamachoma joints and, and, and Addis and, 
and some Swahili food and some Ugali and, you know, bring it on, bring it on. And not only the business side, but the culture side as well. And Kenyan music. And, and, and there's some really beautiful new Kenyan brews. I mean, Kenyan beers that are made in Kenya or whatever, but Kenyan brew yeah. or what do they call them? Drafts or whatever. I'm not a beer person, but there's some really great brands that I've been hearing about. And so that would be a really great entrance into your market. So, yeah, yeah. okay. I made it to 45 minutes with my mentor. You guys have met him now, Mr. Adi Salimayo. I'm so excited. Um, I love conversations like this because right now inside me, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I've got that piece of land, maybe just maybe agriculture. What are we doing with it? Come on. Um, yeah, but I love, I love you so much, Addis. You, you're absolutely fantastic. Everybody needs thank an you. Addis in their life. So um, thank you. This was a blessing. Thank this was the way to start the year. Inspired, <laughs> highlighted opportunities, and let's make some beautiful things happen, you know. There you go. Let's make, some, you so let's make some regional moves and put our stank face in it. Stank. There you go. So um, welcome on board, Akazi. Really looking forward to um, um, getting a few of these products out there recycled, made here in Kenya, made in Kibra, um, owned by two amazing, lovely ladies um, who are, by the way, two different continents. Uh, uh, mixing together and making some beautiful jewelry, recycled at that. And um, yeah, there's going to be more. Thank you so much to Nokia for making this possible. Um, so please like, follow, subscribe uh, into the Core Podcast with Linda. We'll be back with more. I'm a hatter, so next week we'll be talking to a hatter from Rome. So make sure you keep it right here and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you so much, Adis. I'm a Saganalo. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, everybody. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> I love it.